Rosa and Isaac are the divorced parents of a mature, reserved 13-year-old daughter, Bettina. They separated when Bettina was six. Isaac is proud and committed to his military career and lifestyle. But after a couple of deployments, Rosa found the separations too hard for her. Isaac is still in the military, serving overseas now in special ops. Details about his location and his work are off limits. He keeps in touch with his daughter when he can, assuring Bettina that he is safe and telling her not to worry. Isaac and Rosa don't communicate directly, and Bettina doesn't share her feelings about her father. In fact, she doesn't share much at all, which is Rosa's concern. Bettina never wants to talk about her father with me, and that's been pretty much true since we split. She'd be good at special ops herself. My girl can keep a secret. I think that's partly why her girlfriends like her so much. She's a good student, especially at languages. She's taken Spanish and French. She's doing well in all her classes and likes math because it's easy for her. Socially, she and her best girlfriend are really tight. She seems more comfortable one-on-one -on -one than with a group, except for with her church friends. She and her best friend are both active in the youth group. A couple of her cousins are too. The pastor who runs the group says Bettina looks happy and is one of the hardest workers on the projects they do. She's the one who figures out how to work out any problem that comes along. He calls her unflappable. I guess they were painting the church basement and realized they were running out of paint. Bettina suggested taking the white paint and mixing it with the remaining blue so they could paint two walls a lighter blue and then add some sponged on clouds. Problem solved. And it looks awesome. Hard to believe it's the same old basement now. What I don't understand is why she never even tells her church friends about her father being deployed. What does she feel about him? This pastor who she really likes hadn't heard a word about her father. He's checked in with her a couple of times, and she just says she knows her dad's good at his job and she trusts him. She says sometimes she worries a little, but not much. Could that be true? Maybe it seems silly that I'm worried about her, but she's changed so much in the past year or so. Her body has certainly changed, and she's gained some weight. She's sure looking like a woman, and I admit, it worries me. I mean, I'm somebody who'll tell anyone and everyone what's on my mind. Bettina is so different. She is a closed book, lips zipped shut. She says she'll let me know if she has a problem, but can't I trust her to say anything? How will I know when I should be worried? Do Rose's worries sound familiar to you? She's raising a question that challenges all of us, parents and professionals. When should we be worried? When should our concern for a child rise to the level of seeking a professional evaluation? It can seem especially difficult to know when your child is like Bettina, a confident, competent, but private early teen. Some children share their thoughts easily and often, but others like Bettina don't share much at all. Sometimes they tell parents that talking about a worry doesn't make them feel any better. And other times they say they just aren't worrying about anything. If I were meeting with Rosa, first I'd want to empathize with how hard it can be to have a teen you love be so silent, especially if you're a talker yourself. I would want Rosa to know that she's paying attention to all the right things. Bettina's schoolwork, her best friend, the other teens she spends time with, and the adult who supervises them. All signs are that her daughter's on track, even if Bettina's worrying privately about her dad. One thing that came through in Rosa's story is that she's left worrying about her child instead of with her child. And on top of that, Rosa and Isaac don't talk with each other so Rosa likely feels more alone with her worries about her daughter and may well have worries about her ex-husband too. Rosa needs help opening the lines of communication with her daughter, at least enough to feel comfortable knowing if Bettina's doing all right or heading off track. In my experience, there are ways to increase the chances of having conversations, even with a reserved child or teen. Some of these are discussed in the Talking with Children and Teens video. But Parents also often have to adjust their expectations, especially when parent and child have different styles of relating, like quiet Bettina and her mom. I'd want to brainstorm with Rosa about when and where she and Bettina have had their very best conversations. 
If they've had good talks in the past while cooking or eating together, this could be a great way for Rosa to check in with her daughter. Rosa is noticing that her daughter has gained some weight and has matured physically. She might be worried about the social pressures her daughter will be facing looking more womanly, and she may be concerned about Bettina's weight or Bettina's health. Appearance is so often a stress for teenagers, especially girls. Some girls welcome the attention that accompanies breast development, while others feel self-conscious. Some teenagers start eating more to soothe distressed emotions, while other teenage girls may restrict their eating to try to fit an unhealthy female ideal. Knowing how body image pressures can affect adolescent girls, preparing a healthy meal together could offer Rosa the opportunity to model good nutritional choices and a chance to work and chat side by side. For good ideas about family meals, check out Kitchen Connections in the Home-Based Community Center and share your ideas with us. It's interesting how many parents tell me that their children talk more easily about emotional topics when they're not looking at each other. It might be riding in the car or when the parent is at the sink or stove. So a good rule of thumb is when your child starts talking, just continue doing whatever you were doing. If you stop what you're doing and rush around face to face, he or she is likely to clam up. When Bettina starts talking, Rosa should just let her talk and let her direct the conversation. And Rosa asks some questions to learn more. Some parents complain that letting a child guide the conversation doesn't lead to what the parent wanted to talk about. But if we want our children to talk with us, we have to want to hear what's really on their minds. Another idea for Rosa to consider would be for her to take advantage of the school's health curriculum and find out what topics are being addressed at her daughter's middle school. She could talk to the health teacher or guidance counselor and then use these school discussions as a launching pad to have follow-up talk with Bettina at home. Another potential conversation starter would be for Rosa to ask Bettina to talk about other teens at school. Ask who's popular and why? Who do you think is smart or quirky or a leader? And also ask who are the teens that Bettina and her friends are worried about? You'll learn a lot about your own child when you hear what makes another teen appear to be at risk in your child's eyes. You might hear that everybody drinks, but that one kid's really in trouble with alcohol. Listen, listen, and listen more. If you launch into a lecture about drinking, you'll never learn what your child sees as different about that troubling peer. And also, remember that teens are really sensitive. If you're sighing or smirking, you can shut down a conversation in a nanosecond. It's always easy enough for our teens to shut us out or tell us only what they think we want to hear. The Home-Based Community Center has other activities to do with your teenager to facilitate that communication back and forth. For Rosa, like many parents who have a different coping style from their child, this parent-child difference requires an adjustment of expectations. Especially with a less open child, thinking of the ways to get a conversation started is helpful and then remembering to listen to learn is key. Early teen years can be challenging for girls with changing bodies and social pressures. Being a good role model when it comes to health, physical and emotional, is important. I like the image of riding on the back of a motor scooter for how it feels to be the parent of a teenager. Picture the parent riding on the back and the teenager guiding them through the teenager's land. If we as parents want to be invited to ride on the back of the motor scooter, we better be very respectful tourists. If Rosa's not riding with Bettina, she can't provide the loving adult guidance to help keep her daughter healthy and safe. Did Bettina remind you of your child or another child you know? Please let us know if this was helpful to you by rating the video. Also, let us know if you'd recommend it to another parent or a friend. Thank you for sharing your feedback. It's important to us.